This week was in my knee. Had some fluid build up. The shit was blown up like a balloon. And I wake up the next morning and I almost pass out. Like I felt like I was dying. I was literally bedridden. Like I could not move. Then I get a call that night and they're like, okay, we need to go to the hospital in the morning. There's, we found there's bacteria in your fucking, in my fluid. Fucking dangerous. Based on what Max Crosby says in this video, he had a condition that's limb threatening and even life threatening. It's called septic arthritis. We're going to be breaking down the medical side of this so we could gain a higher appreciation for the dog that is within Max Crosby. Stay tuned until the end of this video because we're going to be discussing the long term implications and what this means for Max Crosby going forward. In order to appreciate this condition, we're gonna be reviewing key anatomical structures using our anatomy tool. This is the left knee. Our joints are comprised of at least two bones, which meet at a common point, but remain structurally separate from each other. Some examples include the knees, elbows, shoulders, and hips. This sheath of tissue here is known as the joint capsule or synovial membrane. This membrane produces a special fluid to lubricate the joint and prevent wear on cartilage, like the meniscus, providing a virtually frictionless surface for the bones to glide against. The highly vascularized joint synovium lacks a limiting basement membrane, so it's actually prone to infection. Bacterial invasion of the synovium and joint space leads to an inflammatory process called septic arthritis, which is an orthopedic emergency that can cause significant joint damage. And some data show despite antibiotic use, there's about a 7 to 15% mortality rate for in-hospital septic arthritis. If not treated right away, the infection can quickly and permanently lead to severe damage of the cartilage and the bone. And this can lead to deformity, disability, and even loss of limb. So you can imagine why early diagnosis and treatment are crucial for preserving joint function. Based on what Max Crosby says, he met the criteria for bacterial septic arthritis because he had, number one, acute onset of at least one swollen, warm, red, or painful joint. Number two, he had a fever. And number three, the joint fluid aspiration grew bacteria. What's going on Raider Nation and sports fans? I'm your host, Dr. Nav. If you guys are learning something new, please give this video a huge thumbs up and please smash that subscribe button. It really helps our family grow. Thank you. There's different etiologies of the source of infection. Most septic joints develop after a systemic infection where bacteria or other pathogens in the blood seed themselves within the vascular synovial membrane. It can also happen secondary to direct injury or penetrating trauma, like a puncture wound, like from a human or animal bite or a nail puncture, or after trauma to a joint, even without an obvious break in the skin, which for NFL athletes can happen during any play. A more rare cause is joint aspiration or local corticosteroid injection from a dirty needle, and sometimes direct introduction of bacteria during joint surgery has increasingly been a source of bacterial arthritis. You might recall this happened to Tom Brady when he had his ACL reconstruction, and it also happened to Alex. Smith. When a patient has septic arthritis, before you give antibiotics, blood cultures and fluid analysis from the joint should be obtained. This can be done via needle aspiration or arthroscopy, which is using a camera, or arthrotomy, which is an open surgical drainage. Warning, I'm going to show you a pretty gnarly clip right here of open surgical drainage. So if you get queasy, I would recommend skipping the next 10 seconds of this video. This is infected knee joint fluid shooting out of the knee. Can you imagine if Max Crosby's knee looked anything like this six days before he played. In the hospital, once cultures are obtained, broad spectrum intravenous antibiotics are typically started and they can be narrowed down once the sensitivities become available. There's a 100% chance that Max was on antibiotics during Sunday's game. It's likely there were oral antibiotics, although some patients require IV antibiotics for a prolonged period of time. My biggest concern in the short and long term is hopefully he got this thing drained and received treatment early enough to where it doesn't have permanent damage to the structures we We've discussed. They mentioned during the broadcast that the knee will require some type of monitoring. This doesn't mean that he'll definitively need some type of surgery in the off season, but it'll likely have a scope where they take a camera to view the structures and see the extent of the damage. Either way, Mad Max is a different type of human being. It's not normal for someone to play six days after having a life-threatening infection. It just goes to show the mental toughness that he has. Shout out to Max Crosby. He was the first NFL player 
player of the season with a doubtful designation that actually played. And on top of that, he ended up getting a sack on Patrick Mahomes. There you have it, folks. If you learned something new, don't forget to give this a huge thumbs up. Raider Nation, we're going to continue breaking down the medical side of these sports injuries as well as discussing anatomy. So if that type of thing interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button. It really helps our family grow. Thank you.